Cool. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is just um, open up a replit um, and like a new replit that's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then feel free to follow along. Uh, JS fundamentals, you can name it whatever you want. Um, and I think a cool feature that Varun and I were, were thinking of showing you guys was adding a dark mode sort of toggle to your site. So um, we, we all know you guys have a, like personal sites or like you have a bunch of like, projects that you want to work on. And I think it would be cool to add like a, like a, a small toggle that when you click on it, um, it makes your site in dark mode. And this will just give you like a short introduction to, um, to event listeners. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like press a space bar and it will automatically make your site in dark mode. Um, so, and if you click the space bar again, it'll toggle it back to light mode. So we just think it'd be a really cool um, way to learn what event listeners are, go through like variables in JavaScript, connecting HTML to, to JavaScript, um, and showing you how that all works, just as for like a short intro workshop. So um, I'm just gonna put in some random stuff here, some random text, um, and you can put in whatever you want. I'm just putting in some text so that we, see, we have some content on the screen to switch to, um, like switch the colors of. Um, so feel free to open up your, you can even open up your existing personal website that we built on, um, when was it, Tuesday. So you can add dark, dark mode to that as well. So I'm just gonna really quick change the font and stuff like we did um, in the first workshop. So font family, this is, if you guys remember, uh, font family, my bad. Um, let's change the color and yeah. So we just have our text on screen and what we want to do is we want to enable dark mode every time, um, someone clicks on the space bar, for example, and I can show you exactly how to do that. So what we would want to do is we didn't go over this on Tuesday, but there's this things called classes and you may or may not know about this. Um, classes allow you to, as you saw in style CSS, I was able to directly target the body element and edit everything within there. Um, what if, however, I only wanted to, um, like what if I created multiple H1s? So like if I had two H1s um, right here, and I only wanted to style this H1. I don't want to style all the H1s because if I just did H1 in style at CSS, it would style both in light and test. What if, I, what if I just wanted to style in light or what if I just wanted to style test? So there's this thing called classes um, and I can demo this right now. So we can do H1 class equals dark or something like that. Um, and if I go to style at CSS, you can specify classes using dot and the class name, so dot dark. Um, and I'm gonna change this color to white because we want um, yeah, this color to white because we're not gonna be able to see it, but it's just, um, just for like an example. So if I run this, you'll see test is white um, and the original and light um, without the class. So the H1 without the class, it has its own um, color as specified in body. So that's, some, that's a little bit about classes. But what we wanna do is we wanna have a class that will change the background color of, so you see the background color of this side is white. We wanna toggle a class. So like activate and deactivate a class that will change the background color and the corresponding text on screen. So Let's make that class first of all. So let's make a dark class um, as I, I, I shouldn't have erased that, but when we wanna go into dark mode, we want like white text or like some light, light colored text and we want the background to be dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert this. So I'm gonna make the background um, hashtag 333, which is um, like, uh, like a gray, grayish color. And I don't know why this is, this might be the same color. Three, 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 two, there. So what I want to do is invert this. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to delete this because I don't want that. 
If I run this, we go back to our normal site. But if I add a class to the body, um, class equals dark. If I run this, there we go. We have it inverted. And just to, to explain this, what we did here is that these are the default styles for body. But to override the default styles, I gave body a class and that class name is called dark. And to reference that in CSS, I wrote dot dark, open bracket, color white, background, hashtag 333, which is the color of the text before. So I basically just inverted um, the, the font color and the background color. But now, like you can see our site's in dark mode, but to toggle it, um, to go back to light mode, we, there's no way of doing that, right? We have to manually remove or add this class to, to toggle. Um, so if I run this, then we go back to normal. So before I move on, are there any questions regarding what I just did with classes and um, like the, the concept of classes in CSS? Because I know we didn't go over this on Tuesday. Does it make sense? Thumbs up. Sweet. Is there, is there a code for inverting colors like normally? So like if you didn't memorize the hash of like um, black, yeah, um, it would be possible, but you would have to get the color of the text in JavaScript and then find its uh, like exact inverse um, and and put that in. It's possible, but um, like we, we could probably figure it out later. But uh, I think just like to keep it simple, we're just gonna like have pre-designated colors for dark and light mode. Um, and so so moving on, we we have this class right here, and. What I want to do is I don't want to manually type out this class name. I want it to be dynamically um, uh, every time I press like a state, uh, space bar, I want th that class to show up. So we can do that using JavaScript. And JavaScript allows us to add like interactivity into our website. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So there is one thing that I think um, Varun went over in, at the end of kickoff, if you were around. And there was like those event listeners. Event listeners allow you to basically track different events that um, you can call with your keyboard or mouse. So uh, an example event would be a click or um, move the movement of a mouse. So there is one event that's called on key up, and that is whenever you click a key on the keyboard. And we're gonna make use of that. So I'm gonna type in document. Uh, we're opening up a document because that's like the root element. Root element basically means that um, everything that the, like whenever you render a page, like the browser renders the page, it comes from document. And that document object has all the information about a web page. So I'm gonna do document.body. And document.body is actually referencing this body tag right here. So everything in between this body tag, this opening body tag and this closing body tag. So document.body dot on key up. So we're saying that when there is um, a key pressed, call this function. So whenever you press um, a keyboard, we're gonna call this function and we're gonna define that function right now. Function, and then we need to pass some sort of parameter to it to get the data from the event. So I'm just gonna name it E, space, um, open bracket, close bracket. And then right now, I'm just gonna console log um, E, just to show you guys what this is. So if I click run, nothing is happening, but I'm gonna press a random key in my keyboard. Um, wait, let me do this. Run. If you guys see this keyboard event is trusted getter. I don't know what is trusted getter means um, exactly, but as I type more stuff, there's, there's keyboard events that are being called. But how do we know which key I'm pressing? So each key has a unique key code. And let's try um, console logging that. So I'm gonna do e dot key code. And I'm gonna run that. And now I'm gonna type in random keys. So like A, oh no, I just need to run this and then click on this. A, so I just clicked on A and its key code is 65. I'm gonna click on S, its key code is 83 and so on. So every single key has its own key code. I'm gonna type in the space bar. 
um, and we can see what what ID that has or like what what numerical value that is. So it looks like that is 32. And what we want to do is toggle the class every time the key code equals 32. Every time we press a key and that key code equals 32 because I want this dark mode to only trigger when I um, click the space bar. You can make it a different key code if you wish. Just make sure which key you're pressing um, makes sense. So I'm going to do an if statement. So I'm like if e dot key code, if the code is equal to 32, what we would like to do is to toggle the class. And how may we do this? We can do this by using this function that is already built into JavaScript. It's called, um, first we got to get the classes of body. So first we go document dot body dot class list. By the way, guys, um, I did not memorize any of this. I looked it up before this workshop. And if you want to figure out like, oh, how do I toggle classes in JavaScript? That's exactly what you would Google. That's, that's exactly what I Googled. And that's how I found this function. So document.body.classlist.toggle. Hey, Samay. Yeah. Um, so uh, just one question. So how, does, how can you set the, the on key up to a function? How does that work? Like why, why, aren't, why can't you define it? Can you define it somewhere else? Or how does that work? Yeah, exactly. Um, you can actually make it its own. Um, so you got to set it up equal to some. So like the event listener is document.body.onkeyup. So what you're setting it equal to is you're basically telling it what does the computer need to do when a key is pressed and you can define it in a different way. You can, um, you can literally say, uh, dark mode. And I think you don't need parentheses, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Rune. You don't. Yeah. Sweet. So you do dark mode. Um, and this would work too. And we can we can see that um, by console logging. And let's just test that real quick. So console log e dot key code. And I'm just gonna type. Okay, that is not working. So let's see, let's see what we missed. I think I have to pass in. Do we have to pass an e here? No, I don't think so. But you might have to define it. Uh, after the function or something? Hmm. Okay, so let's try defining this after, oh shoot, what just but, happened? Would it only um, log if uh, it's a space bar? Oh, yes, yes. Let's, let's try that. I, I've pressed random keys. You are 100% right. So I forgot I added that line. So let's just see if this works first. Spacebar. Yeah, it works. That was it, Maxim. Thank you. So it's actually working right now. Um, and there are two ways of doing it. So you can either just set this equal to a function, um, or you could just name the function and specify and define the function somewhere else. So either way works. And now that we have this, what we want to do is we want to toggle the class on body to, to toggle dark mode and light mode. So I'm going to do document dot body dot class list dot toggle and the name of my class. So I think my, the name of my class is dark. Sweet. I'm going to run that. And before I run that, uh, actually, let's, let's run this first um, and show you. Sweet. It works. So I'm clicking the space bar and it switches between dark and light mode. So this is basically changing a class in in um, HTML, dependent on an event listener in JavaScript. I'm just going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a transition to this, just so it looks a little more clean um, and everything transitions really nicely. So I'm going to refresh the page. And as I click the space bar, you can see it fades in and fades out, which is a really nice and cool effect. Um, this is just like a short intro to event listeners, which is something that's important in the web paint app. And I'm going to hand it over to Varun real quick. Um, and he's going to do another short demo with event listeners. But any yeah. questions before I, I pass it over, guys? Can you show me the index document again? Yep. The index document is just um, as normal as you can get. It just has the text that I have. There's nothing oh. here to specify because 
I'm actually dynamically adding that class. So oh, okay, cool. Let, let me show you guys how this works. Actually, I think this is something I want to uh, show you. This is a great, um, great point to bring up here, Max. So if you look at this body tag here, notice what happens when I click the space bar. The class dark gets added. I click the space bar again, the class gets removed. So that's the really cool part um, of seeing how the console, or you can actually see like what the source code of the site is in real time by opening up the console uh, by clicking on inspect element. And I think it's it's super valuable that you guys do that whenever you're debugging or just want to see more about how your your site works. Sweet. Um, any other questions? Sweet. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Varun for another short demo. Sweet. Uh, can you enable screen share? Yes. Done. So uh, here's another one. So if you could actually open up another REPL, that would be awesome. So just like make a new REPL. Um, I called it box movement because what we're going to do is something super simple. We're just going to have a little box follow your mouse. And the idea behind this is that you get an introduction to mouse events and how that would work. And this is really helpful for uh, the web paint app and just in general understanding uh, event listeners a little more. So now once we have uh, our new REPL, um, let's create our box. So let's first do that. And I'm going to give it an ID of box. So just a div with an ID of box. And IDs are very similar to classes, if you haven't seen them before. Um, they accept, they are traditionally used for only one thing. So only one element will have a singular ID. And usually with classes, you assign them to multiple things. And it's just another way to identify an element. So now that we have our box, let's just style it so that we get it on the screen. Um, so we're going to give it um, a width, say 100px, uh, a height, 100px, and let's just give it a background color of like a grayish color, similar to our dark mode from earlier. So if we run this, we'll notice we have a box on the screen. So cool. So next we have to see if we can get some mouse movement. So Same introduced uh, uh, event listeners. So now we're going to use a, another event listener. It's called mouse move. So Same did his event listener like this, document dot um, body dot um, on key up or on key down. But there's one more way to do this. Uh, rather than doing dot on key up, you can actually do add event list. And this is a function that takes in two arguments. So in this case, we'll have um, mouse move. And our second argument will be a function. So similar to how um, Samay was showed us earlier, we can either define the function inside or we can do it outside and just name it. So let's just say function move box. And rather than defining it inside here, we can just call move box. Cool. So now that we have our event listener um, and we're going to add our little object to see where the mouse actually is. Let's, um, let's log this again, except we're going to log where the mouse is. And the, the attributes that are where the mouse is are client x and e.client y. So what I just did there was I created a string from two numbers. So I took a number, added it, added a, added a space between it, and another number. So you'll notice when I run this, and I go on the screen, nothing has happened. Um, hmm. 
Okay. Um, oh, I have to run it. Ah, perfect. So now if you see in the console, when I'm on the screen, the numbers keep coming. And you can see the as I move the X position, the numbers get lower for the X. And as I move the Y position, the numbers get higher and lower for Y. Cool. Um, so now let's make our box move with this with our mouse. So what we need to do for that is we need to set the top and left attributes of our box to these values. So um, let's first get our box. So we need to do document dot get element. Oops. We need to make a variable box equal to document dot get element by ID. And as you noticed from before, we gave our ID box. So we're going to get this element box. And what that does is it now stores this div, this box, in this variable. So now we can refer to this whole thing as just this, which is very nice. So nothing happened yet because we haven't done anything with the box. We've just assigned it. So now what we want to do is we want to set attributes of the box. So um, in order to make this work, uh, we need to do box.style.top. And we can set that equal to e.clientx, or sorry, y. Because from the top, we want uh, the y position of our mouse. And we just have to add a little pixel because we have to give it our unit. So, so now the y position should work, but we missed one thing. And that is, in order for it to be styled like this, you need to have position absolute. And there's a couple different attributes for position. Absolute is one that um, positions it using relative position. So like from the top, we can define a certain number of pixels down and from the left, a certain number of pixels to the left. So in this case, we're doing the top. So if we run this, the Y position, okay, this is lagging a lot, but I think you saw in the beginning, it, um, it actually did move with the mouse. Um, oh, there we go. Um, all right, I think it's lagging a bit. Is anyone having these troubles as well, or? Try opening a new tab. Yeah, let's try that. That's weird. How's everyone doing with this? Is, is this also happening to you, or? Oh. Is it only on when you're when you're holding down your mouse? No, it seems like it's only when I'm in the box. Oh, well, what is the event listener added to? The whole. Oh, okay. Yeah, I may have messed this up. It might just be document dot edit. Let's try this. Ah, there we go. So what I accidentally did was I added the event listener only to the body. And the body was only as big as the block. So only when I was over the body did the mouse event listener work. So now you'll notice that the, the box moves with our mouse. Cool. So now only one thing left, and that is to set the other one. So set the left. So box.style.left equals e.clientx plus px to give it our unit. And now let's run this and check it out. 
a box move with our mouth. And let's just check out uh, it in the new tab and let's inspect to see what's up. So if you notice, the top and left continually change. But yeah, uh, that was like a little introduction to uh, mouse event listeners and kind of where, where you can take this is say you wanted some sort of reaction game or something like that, you can uh, you can spawn boxes all over your screen and maybe make it a race to click on them or um, something like that because you can get the, the position of the mouse and the position of the boxes and calculate something based on that. Hey, Rune, you want to go back? Sure. So um, I might have missed this, but something that was confusing for me when I was doing JavaScript was um, like passing in the E. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just prefer to call it event, but you might want to like explain like passing in function, like passing in variables into functions because E seems pretty arbitrary um, yeah. in this instance. So you might want to explain that. That's a good point. So with these event listeners, there's an quote unquote implicit thing that gets passed in. So with an event listener, uh, there's always this object that describes the event. And it's, it's, um, it's just convention to either call it E or event um, and this works. So to give another example, let's just say you had some other function, say it was add and you had two numbers, A and B. Um, you could return A plus B. And you can call this function. Let's just say on two numbers, so four and five. So in this case, we actually have to pass in these two numbers. But with event listeners, it just implicitly gets passed in. And that is definitely pretty confusing. So if we run this and let's just say we console log this, we should see the number nine. I'm gonna get rid of this so that we can actually see the number nine. And there we go. So that's how you would pass in variables. So yeah, um, rest of the time is just for questions um, and maybe something that you might want to do with this or any, anything you'd like. So I'm getting it to follow my cursor. However, I'm not getting the console to log anything. Um, so I'm kind of confused on why it's not logging for me. Maybe it's my page. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when I commented out this, this stops the logging. Because this is, this is the log. Um, do, you, do you have this E variable in your function as well? Yeah, I have it. Wait, what did you say you commented out one more time? I accidentally, uh, I had commented this out so that we could see this. But okay. now that it's back, you should see the logging again. And you okay. might have to press run. Maybe that's another thing. Yeah, I got it. Sweet. Dope. Cool. How could you kind of make the box um, kind of lag to come to the cursor? Is there any sort of way that you could like modify this easily, or would that require some totally new function to be created? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, I don't think it's a specific way, but like, for example, logging to the console usually takes a bit of time. So let's just say we comment this out. It should be a little faster, but it, it still does lag a bit. Um, I don't think there's any particular way to fix that. Uh, any ideas, Sunay? Um, so right now we're changing it in, like, so every time you move your mouse, it's changing the style. There's, like, another way to do it, um, which is what, how you'll do it in the web paint app you won't be exactly editing, editing the, um, the style of the page. You'll be using something called 
HTML's Canvas, which allows you to do these types of like interactive things that um, that are not that isn't as laggy because it's it has like its own uh, software for that. So HTML has its own like Canvas sort of mm -hmm. um, API as they call it, and that allows you to like be able to build like interactive scenes and things like that that are not as laggy because we're not changing this the um, the style every single time the mouse moves but this example was just like as a really simple introduction just for yeah. the concept of event listeners uh, my question is actually a little bit different i was asking like how could you make it lag um oh, like if you oh. wanted like let's say if you were making like a game for example and like you didn't want this like object to come touch your cursor um that's kind of like is there a way to like slow it down like when it's tracking like even more so that the box would lag or does that require like totally building out a new function is what I meant. No, you totally could. Um, the, the way you would do that, I think the easiest way would be to uh, use dates. So like there's this date object and this can get you like the current time. And what you can do is you can basically essentially put a little sleep here of a certain number of time. So then it would like lag to your cursor, um, but it would like follow. Couldn't, couldn't you also change the style? So like subtract or add some like amount of time. So say your, your cursor moves, then the there's always gonna be an offset, right? You can add an offset to how far uh, the div is from your cursor. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. But um, then it won't like lag as much or it would just be off center. So okay, yeah. for example, if we wanted to do what uh, you're saying, uh, we would do something like, I don't know, um, 20, we could add 20 to it. And if we run this, you'll notice it's like a little below my cursor, but it doesn't exactly lag any more than it did. I see. Is there a way you can change the shape from say like a square to like a triangle or like a circle? Yeah, for sure. So the, the place we actually originally um, defined the shape of our uh, box was in our CSS. So right. what we can actually do is let's just say you wanted a circle, we could do border radius 50%. And now if we run this, we'll have a circle. But you notice like, it is a little off the mouse now. So we could do that thing that you were talking about where we actually offset it here to get it like right to the center. So in uh, this case, we would have to subtract, um, say like 50-ish. Let's just see how that works. And we would subtract from both. And now it's in the center. Would it be possible to use the use this with an emoji? Like maybe call Unicode through CSS. Yeah, for sure. So let's just say we wanted an emoji instead. Um, we could actually, rather than a div, we could use a p tag. So let's just say we wanted, I don't know, um, the rocket emoji. This one's pretty nice. Um, so we can use a P tag and just put this rocket emoji inside. And let's see what happens. I don't know exactly <laughs> if it'll update properly. Okay. So we just have to get rid of these things because this was our styling for our circle. And if we comment those out, it should work. Yeah, perfect. Um, and we just have to get rid of this offset that we put in. So why did you have to change it from uh, a div to a p tag? Um, so p tags just generally usually hold um, text, but you know you make a good point. It would uh, work, yeah. I think it would work actually. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you're totally right. Okay, yeah. Sweet.
cool. And we can make this a little bigger, make it look a little nicer, maybe like, like that. Sweet. And obviously, you can offset it to make it look better too. Cool. Could you could you use this to like replace like say a cursor like change the way a cursor looks like? You about to ask that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I think there's actually a like because you see the cursor is still there. Yeah. So I think there's like an inbuilt way to do that. Uh, not totally exactly sure how to do that, but let's see. cursor. There's actually a CSS attribute that will allow you like to specify an image as your cursor. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, looks like there is some way to do it. Yeah, here we go. So there's like a cursor attribute. Sweet. Any other questions? At what point uh, did you make it an emoji? Like what, what line of code switched it from a box to a... Um... Yeah, uh, so what we did was we added the emoji inside the div and then we got rid of these, these styles. So if I were to bring this back, then we would notice that the, the circle is back. So it was mostly the CSS that did it. And just adding the emoji inside the div. There's one more thing I want to go over if there, like no other questions. It's, it's non-product related. It's just uh, talking about future projects. But before we start that, are there any, any questions on this? Okay, sweet. Um, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. I just wanna show the web again, um, just before we leave, uh, just to like people know what um, what they can work on in the next couple of days. So next product is due Sunday, and there's a couple of projects you can choose from. So um, I'm not sure if some of you attended Max and Oliver's workshop before on Python, but this first project, Linear Regression, and I think there's Max, uh, there's a, there's a workshop on this tomorrow, right? Or is Max in here? Oh, I think Max had to go. But um, there's a workshop on this, I'm pretty sure, tomorrow on linear regression. So you can learn how to code your own linear regression algorithm. Um, so if you do choose to go for that project by Sunday, make sure you go to that workshop tomorrow by Max. Um, the WebPaint app is actually very similar to what we did today. So it'll cover um, event listeners and use event listeners to allow you to create like a digital whiteboard for yourself. And that um, web paint app is really similar to what we just did. So if you really like what we did, then you should probably go for that. And then there's, you can also build a clock. Um, and a clock is just, it's built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so the same technologies we used. But um, there's some calculations involved to move the hour, minute, and second hand by a certain amount of degrees around the circle to make, like, um, to make each hand move at like, the right um, amount every second. So that's also pretty cool to look at if you're into that. And then alternate um, projects include a hex color generator, which also does use an event listener, similar to clicking the space bar as we did for dark mode. This will generate a random color every time you click the space bar, which is honestly pretty cool. Um, you can build a 3D snow globe using a animation library in JavaScript, um, which is on the site as well. And then you can even, if you're more interested in the Python side of things and linear regression isn't your thing, you can build a guessing number game. But I think if you went to the last workshop, which is recorded, that's exactly what they built. So um, any of these projects are fair game. Um, and even any other product on Enlight that may seem interesting to you, uh, we, we fully support that. And just wanted to like go through these couple projects and give a short intro to them, just so you know um, what you'd be getting into before, before Sunday. Um, yeah, any questions on that? 